Hi, I'm Stephanie and this is my home, the 16th century Chateau de Lalande. Lalande was owned for hundreds of years by a family of marquises who were at the heart of French royal life. One of them even had the honour of being sent by King Louis XV to greet Marie Antoinette on her arrival in France. But, far from being a stuffy museum, this chateau is a living home. I live here all the time and I'm regularly joined by my mother, my family, my friends and wonderful volunteers from all over the world who help me to lovingly restore this historic home. Welcome to La Lande, a chateau filled with life, love and laughter. Hello, welcome back to the Chateau de Lalande. Come in, come in. This time I am finally going to show you my own apartment. I've been putting it off because there's so much work that's needed to be done there. It's really halfway through being done, but you can see it, it's a work in progress. It's just this way. Mine is the only part of the house that you haven't seen yet. My apartment takes the entire central wing on the first floor. From the moment I open these doors, we're going to find ourselves in a bit of a mess, but I'll explain why. Welcome to the area universally known in this chateau as the Corridor of Doom. It's actually usually even worse than it is now. It tends to have a lot of bags piled up and it boxes that are waiting to go to other parts of the chateau. Because it's an entirely private corridor, it leads from the main stairs, to my bedroom door, to my dressing room, and to my boudoir. I am the only person who uses it, which means that everybody thinks it's a viable dumping ground for anything they don't know where to put. It all comes here, and that's quite frustrating, but I have come up with a genius plan to stop this from happening. I am going to remove this wall, and it won't be a corridor anymore. It will just be a much bigger boudoir, because on the other side of this wall is my boudoir, my sulking room. That's actually what the word boudoir means in French. It's one of my favourite room names in the world. And I'll show you when we go in there, but it only has one window. It's a huge window, but it would be a wonderful room if it had light coming from both sides as my bedroom does. And that is why so many things haven't been done here yet. As you can see, I haven't finished decorating the walls. I've just randomly put some of my father's paintings up to keep them safe for the time being. There's no wallpaper yet. Everything is just waiting. I haven't even made the curtains. There's just a pelmet because I don't quite know what curtains I'll be having in this spot yet. One of the lovely things about this corridor though is that you can still see the original paintwork which all of the corridors had when we first moved in. It used to be very fashionable in chateaus to paint the walls as though they were stones. They weren't stones, it's simply just painted on and there's a little bit of that left here so it gives you a glimpse back in time. Some of my favourite paintings of my father's are in here especially the blue and yellow one, which used to be in our kitchen and will go back one day, but I don't want it to be in there until it has a glass to protect it. And it's the Gardeners of La Lande, apparently. Looks as though gardening is quite a lot of fun in this house. Maybe I just haven't noticed because I'm not a gardener. And there's also a lovely painting of a tennis match. The people do appear to have forgotten to put their clothes on, so I'm not too sure what was happening in my father's imagination that day, but it's just a delightful painting. The doors in this area are very, very old, and you can see that there's been a little bit of jiggery-pokery going on in the past. I think that this was originally one huge room because just above the door that we came through, which is a 19th century door, you can see a much older over door with a diamond pattern. And you can see the same diamond pattern idea over this door and in the surround and on the bedroom door just the other side. And after that, we're back into 19th century doors. So I think that in fact, this wall, all of these doors were added later. It was originally one big open space in the original part of the chateau, so probably dating back to the 16th century. We're going to start in this room, which is my boudoir. 
come and have a good sulk with me. This room, sadly, is barely used. I use it just as a storage room and to walk through to get to my dressing room. My bedroom is just through there, but it used to be used a great deal because when we first moved to the chateau, my friend Nick and I used to use this room all the time because he worked from home, so he had his computer set up there, just in front of the window, and I had a sofa in this corner and a television, and it was the only room that was safe and warm and comfortable in the entire chateau. And he wallpapered it for me with a Laura Ashley wallpaper, which is just charming and delightful, but it's been up for 15 years now. So when we remove the wall, I'm going to redecorate, but I'm definitely going to keep the chinoiserie theme and I'm obsessed with wallpapers. So I've been doing a lot of research into wallpapers and I'm at the super fun stage of wondering what the room could be like. This room has the most beautiful window in the chateau. It's the biggest window and it goes down very close to the floor. So it has a spectacular view over what was once the lake and what will one day be the lake again. As you can see, I keep a piano in here, which is surprising for somebody who barely plays. I used to have piano lessons my entire childhood and I hated every single one of them. And I was finally freed the day my piano teacher took my mother to one side and said, if you are happy to continue wasting your money, I am happy to continue taking it. And finally appealing to my mother's financial sense worked and my piano lessons were stopped. But then a few winters ago, when I was alone at the chateau, I decided that I would start playing again and I enjoy it much, much more now. So this is near my bedroom so that I can practice. And this piano, it's not the best sounding piano in the world, but it means a lot to me because it belonged to my singing teacher whom I had from the age of nine. My singing teacher, Olive Quantrill, is now in her 80s, but Olive, you can see your piano is still being very loved here, albeit by a very bad pianist. When we have the music workshops here, we have pianists who come from the Conservatoire in Paris, and they practice on this piano as well as on the other pianos in the house. So this piano actually is regularly played by some incredible pianists. Those of you who watch Michael Petrick's vlogs on his YouTube channel, Doing It Ourselves, will have seen that we have some spoof phone calls between us with really old telephones. And you might think that they're just for show, but no, I can prove it. Can you hear that dial tone? I love it because it also has this listening device. So if you're feeling a bit hard of hearing, you can get it in stereo. I very much wanted to show you this bed because those of you who saw my tour last week will have seen us wandering around the attics of the chateau and there were a lot of old, rusty, antique French metal beds leaning up against a wall in the attic. And this was one of them. So this shows you how they can be transformed. We just painted it and then put a base, found a mattress to fit and that's it. Here's my Burmese puppet. This is not his final home. He's just waiting because I'm going to make an area where I can display things like this properly. I have a few from India. Oh, and in fact, they're in this cupboard. I'll show you the cupboard. This is where I keep lots of bits of old fabric. It's a big mess. It hasn't been organized at all. And I could actually just put a chair here and sit looking at these fabrics for hours. I mean, look at this. Somebody recently sent me this beautiful edging as a gift and it's by Nina Campbell and they are glass beads from Murano. This is just heavenly to me and I haven't used it yet because I want to find the perfect, perfect project for it. It's too precious to use on just anything. Oh, this one will clearly have to be used for Scott Mann's room in the future. Look at that, perfect tartan edging. Whenever I go to brocantes, charity shops, if I ever see anything like this, I get it straight away. And in here, waiting for their home, are my Indian puppets. I have a thing about puppets. I don't know why, 
I don't know how to use them. Maybe we should make a little puppet theatre somewhere here one day, just as Georges Sand did in her chateau, where she lived with Chopin only 20 minutes from here. The wardrobe itself is imitation bamboo and it's a French antique. These were very fashionable in the late 19th century and I absolutely love them and I would like one day to make a chinoiserie bedroom with stunning Chinese themed wallpaper and all of the furniture like this. But at the moment it's not for my rooms and I'm just keeping them here until I can finally make that room somewhere in the chateau. I have the wardrobe here the dressing table that I'm using in the meantime in my bedroom and then in the corridor that we just came through is the cheval mirror. I'm still looking for the bed and the bedside tables. But I have also been collecting a lot of these mirrors at Brocance. They can be quite easily found in France. I probably have four or five so far but the idea is that I'll make a whole wall with these as well. Here I have a beautiful plaster cast made by my father. Here I have a letter that my father wrote to his parents. He was sent away to a sort of hospital school when he was a child. No one knows why, his mother claims that she really couldn't quite remember, uh, but he was there for at least a year. We think it was probably a rheumatic fever. And the amazing thing about it is his handwriting. He was nine years old. It's the most beautiful handwriting. And my father did actually go on to have the most beautiful handwriting I'd ever seen. It didn't look anything like this anymore, but it was just the most spectacular handwriting. Sadly, he died in 2009, but he did live here at the chateau with me and he absolutely loved the chateau. And with his paintings and things like this, he's with us all the time. I keep my crowns and tiaras in here. This is a very good one from Butler and Wilson, which is just skulls and the main skull has little red eyes. Very useful for Valentine's Day. This one isn't actually mine, believe it or not. This belongs to my friend, the elusive Nick, who owns the chateau with me. And he was the man described in that quote from Shakespeare's The Tempest, full fathom five my father lies, of his bones are coral made. These are pearls that were his eyes. Anyway, he was him, that father, and he was wearing this crown for one of our costume parties. This is my favorite one. I bought this in Venice, and my best guess is that it probably comes from one of the Catholic statues because they often have crowns in Italy, but it's spectacular. You wouldn't think it, but I use it quite a lot. I mean, you know, just sitting in bed, having a cup of tea. There's just one other thing I'd like to show you in this room before we look at my dressing room. And that's this beautiful Limoges set, which was hand painted probably in the late 19th century because this pattern of chrysanthemums was very, very fashionable in the Art Nouveau time in the kind of Belle Epoque period. It's so stunningly gorgeous. I've kept the other pieces in my bedroom, but I'm waiting to have a display cabinet to put them in one day. Now I can show you my dressing room. This very small room used to be a bathroom when we moved in. There was just a bath, there was no loo, and the drain just went straight out of the window and onto the terrace. So when we finally came to putting the bathrooms into the chateau, we couldn't get plumbing to this one because we're right in the middle here and our septic tanks, I'm sure you're fascinated to hear, one is by one wing and the other is behind the other wing. So getting plumbing right to the heart of the central wing wasn't going to work. So we've turned this into a dressing room instead and my bathroom is now on the other side of my bedroom. I have cupboarding space behind all of these curtains. These are just a very simple silk striped fabric. And I think it works very nicely because it hides all of the cupboards without having to get a lot of carpentry done. And I love the fabric. Again, there's a beautiful window in here, a little bit wasted for a dressing room. This is a cedar wood chest. So I keep all of my cashmere and my jumpers in there so that they don't get eaten by moths because if I forget and I leave them out for even a day, they have hundreds of holes in them. I keep an iron and an ironing board in here. That way I can just iron things as I need them because I tend not to iron everything the moment it's been washed. I've pulled one down so that you can see that this is how all of the hanging works. The rails are high and some low ones and then you can pull them down with this system. And this one is my evening wear. And in these cupboards that were already here, I have my shoes and my bags. 
And then I keep my hat boxes and hats above the cupboard. So for example, in this one, we have the skirts at the top, my tops at the bottom, and then various drawers with belts and scarves. Oh, and another crown. They're everywhere. One quite sweet thing are these door handles. The mechanism is strange. It's when you turn the door handle on the other side, it just lifts the latch. It's quite charming. And I think this room has my favorite of all of the light switches in the house because they're not just porcelain ones, but they're painted to look like marble. I usually just walk through this little door, which we actually had made once I moved in. There are three big doors in my bedroom and I felt that it was unbalanced and that there should be a fourth door and everybody thought I was mad. But when I asked the builder to look if it was possible to put it in, he found that there was already one here and it was hidden behind some boarding that had been put up later. So we just put the original doorway back, which is a little way of sneaking into this room. And in fact, I use this all the time to go to my dressing room. But now we'll go into my bedroom using the main door. Welcome to my bedroom. This room was originally the Chambre de la Comtesse because we have the plans from the 19th century telling us that it was so. The Count was the son of the Marquis and this chateau was owned by Marquis. The Marquise had her bedroom right at the end of the other wing. So I suspect it's no mistake that her daughter-in-law chose to have her bedroom over here. My favorite piece of furniture in this room is my bed. My bed is always my favorite piece of furniture anyway because I spend an inordinate amount of time in it. I do all of my video editing here and I love lying in in the morning. In fact, it's whilst I was lying exactly here that I bought the headboard. I was being very naughty and I was watching the online sale of the Paris Ritz furniture. They sold all of their old furniture before completely restoring the entire hotel. And I saw this headboard come up and I needed a headboard for the Chambre de la Tour renovation that we were doing. So I just couldn't help myself. I just clicked bid and I bought it. And then once I got it into the house, I realized that it didn't fit in Chambre de la Tour. I thought I'd bought a double one and it's a super king. So to cut a very, very long story short, after traveling around the house, it rather happily ended up in my bedroom and I could never have justified the expense for myself but I'm so, so happy that I bought it and that it ended up here. I absolutely love it. And even inside the little dressing tables, you can see the lining paper from the Ritz. I'm slightly obsessed with bedding. The bedding is all by the French company Yves Delorme and the bedspread is from the Volga Linen Company. And my father bought it for me when we were on holiday in St. Petersburg many, many years ago. The most wonderful thing about the way my bed is placed is that in the morning I can look straight out over the old lake or this side into the main courtyard and the fountain, which means I get the light in the morning and then the sunset in the evening. It could not be in a better position. This is another one of those antique French faux bamboo pieces of furniture. This is my dressing table. It's only here until I find a room that I can put all of these pieces together in. But I must say it's very useful because it's so big and it wasn't meant to be used like this, but I'm able to use it to hang my necklaces. The ones that I use the most often are all here. This is another piece of furniture that doesn't really go in my room like the dressing table. And one day I will get lovely furniture to match my beautiful bed, but it's very useful. I bought it for about 50 euros and it's actually for my bathroom, but I don't have a plug socket near enough to it at the moment because it's my tea station. When I wake up in the morning, I stagger over here and I make myself a cup of tea, get a biscuit from my biscuit tin, and that way I can ease gently into the day, but until I've had my tea, I am useless. I can't end without introducing you to Flappy Bird. Many of you who watch my vlogs will know him already. He was my 40th birthday present from my best friend, Nick. Nick and I bought the chateau together back when we were only 29. And at the time I said to him, I wanted a chateau with all of my heart. And one day I wanted an antique French automaton bird in a cage. And he absolutely amazed me on my 40th birthday. 
when he got this for me. Just listen to Flappy Bird. Isn't he the most precious creature in the world? So he always lives near to me. I love this cushion. This was made by a friend of mine and it's made of an old drawing of the Chateau de Lalande from the 19th century. You can tell it's the 19th century because of the way the people are dressed. It's very stylized. Lalande has never had such gloriously pointed towers here. But what's really fascinating about it is that you can see the old lake and in front of the lake, there were two stone towers. So now we know, phase one, get the lake back. Phase two, rebuild the stone towers. Now that'll be fun. The first thing I see when I wake up in the morning is my father's painting. And from the moment he made it, I think I was 17 or 18 when he made this painting, it's been with me. I took it to university with me. It's been in all of my homes since then. I absolutely love it. I find it joyful, cheerful, and it's wonderful to wake up to it every day. And then on the mantelpiece, I have various things that are waiting to go onto the walls because I'm collecting antique toile de jouise to put over my walls. The oyster silk needs a little something to pep it up. This is actually a modern toile de jouise by Brunswick et Fils. Another part of the same fabric is just to the left of my fireplace. These are gorgeous, but this one is old. It's of the Americas and it's stunning. There is a monkey, there are swans, a crocodile, a man with a bow and arrow, it's glorious. And I also have a painting of Lalande where we're all sitting, dangling our feet into the water of the fountain by my friend Micah and a portrait of me by Nick's sister, Joey. And this was a gift from Michael Petherick who made it for me for Christmas. And it's a copy of a William Morris capital. I love this, it means a lot to me. And if any of you haven't seen Michael Petherick's vlog, Doing It Ourselves Yet, you must be the only people in the world not to because in only one month, he got 100,000 subscribers. That's how good it is. So if you haven't seen it, go straight over to see his channel and see what you're missing out on, Doing It Ourselves. And I'll link to his video at the end of this one. I have a thing for scented candles because I love the glow of candle light in the evening. And if you add to that a beautiful scent, well, who doesn't love that? And these are Sir Trudon candles. Sir Trudon used to actually make the candles for Versailles back in its heyday. And they're still in operation today, making glorious scented candles. This one smells of waxed floors in the palace of Versailles. A recent addition to my bedroom was invented during quarantine. I was in self quarantine for two weeks when I got back from my travels to the far east. So I put a basket, which meant that my mother and my friends could put treats in for me because I couldn't come out of my room. But I love it so much that it's going to stay here. Now you never know, someone might put a treat in, even though I'm not in quarantine anymore. I put this rather shocking pink. The idea was that I would put a then smaller band of very pale pink, but it's actually just not working. So I'm going to change it and I'm going to have a wooden surround painted gold. I think that will look much better, especially with lots of toile de jouis against it too. I've painted everything this very muted pink and the idea is that I'll be putting gold lines against it as I have on the other doors and I'm just working my way around the room, finishing that bit by bit. These are the much older diamond shaped doors that I was talking about earlier. All of the other doors in the room are 19th century. These are just beautiful, very old. This door has an experiment that I'd done with a darker pink, but I'm not going to use that. So I'm going to paint over that in the paler pink. This is the way through to my bathroom. So follow me and I will show you my bathroom. I'm laughing because I wish you could see what I can see. My mother's doing the filming for me and she is actually kneeling down at the foot of the stairs to my bathroom because there are so many mirrors in here that she couldn't find a single spot to stand in. Thank you, mummy. This is my bathroom and my favorite thing in it is the bath, which is the very first thing that we ever bought for the chateau. My father bought it for me as soon as we would bought Lalande and it took a while for it to be installed because this wasn't originally a bathroom, but as soon as we could put the plumbing in, the bath arrived. 
I built this alcove for it. There were no walls here before. And then we found the mirrors from Ikea and got a local carpenter to build the frame against them. And it's one of my favorite things in the chateau, this mirrored alcove around the copper bath. I absolutely love it. Here I had a marble surround made for two very simple sinks. And then I put a Brunswick Ifis fabric below it to hide the cupboard. The engravings were just from a calendar that I bought very cheaply many years ago in Venice of Italian scenes. And my father loved it so much that he said, it doesn't matter, it's just a calendar. We'll cut it up and get it framed. And it just goes to show you that you don't need to spend that much money to make quite a big artistic statement on a wall. Okay, I've given up on trying to film this in any way without being in the shot. So hi everyone, uh, this is my bathroom. Just on the other side of my bath, I have my shower and my most important shower cap. Next to the bath is a little marble table with lots of candles. They're beautiful scented candles. There is a bath bomb, which was actually made for me by Angelina in the Chateau du Bayeul. Some of you may watch their vlogs as well. The huge black vases were a gift from my godmother. I love them, especially on the black marble fireplace. And there's a Venetian mirror. These are one of the few curtains that I didn't make in the house. They're from the Volga Linen Company. And then I just jazzed them up by edging them completely with these beads. They're actually seeds from South Africa that I brought back in my suitcase. And the tie backs are also from South Africa. I think it goes very, very nicely with the linen. And here I have a reminder of what life would have been in bathrooms in the past. And I'm very grateful whenever I see it that I have hot and cold running water, but it's very beautiful. And it's by Burley in Stoke-on-Trent in England. And whenever there's space, I think it's wonderful to have a little armchair in a bathroom. And that way you can be chatting to a friend whilst you're lying in the bath. But let's be realistic. Most of the time, it's usually just used for draping too many clothes over rather than taking them back to my wardrobe. This is my very treasured Yves Delon bathrobe. I love it because I've always loved this company. My father and I used to go crazy and get lots of beautiful Yves Delon bedding for the chateau. And when I had only about a thousand followers on Instagram and I hadn't started making my vlogs, this company contacted me and said, we think we have the same vision and outlook and we would love to send you this. And they sent me the beautiful matching towel and my bedding and I did photos for them on Instagram. And this is in no way a sponsored post. They have no idea I'm saying this. I just wanted to say it's not many companies in the world that would reach out to somebody who has only a thousand followers just because they feel that they have the same outlook on life and the same aesthetic. I'm very grateful to them and I love this and I love the matching towel. So they're always in my bathroom. Look how adorable the little tiger is. He cheers me up, he's slightly cross-eyed. He looks like the tamest, most cheerful, harmless tiger in the world. There's a lovely painting by my father of a rather glamorous woman looking at herself in the mirror, but what she sees is her internal innocent side. It might seem odd that I have a men's aftershave and an empty woman's perfume bottle, but I keep these because they remind me of people I love. This was my father's aftershave, Vetiver by Guerlain, and my grandmother always used Chalimar, so I can smell these bottles and remember them. And then this was the first present that my friend Michael Potts, who owns part of the chateau with me, he bought this for me when we first met. He'd just been on holiday to Egypt and he brought this back for me and that was 20 years ago and it's incredible. It still smells amazing. So these are my scents to walk down memory lane. Well, that's everything. I've shown you my entire apartment now, but I hope you'll come back because next year, I'm hoping it will be very different. The wall should have gone in my dressing room. The corridor of doom will be no more. And if all goes well, I'll be able to show you a magnificent chinoiserie boudoir in its place. 
We're going to go down a different way though, because I want to show you the spiral staircase, which only leads to two bedrooms, my bedroom and the one that used to belong to Nick, but because he's now moved to a bigger apartment, will now belong to Michael Petherick for whenever he visits. This is the corridor that goes between the two bedrooms and the only other door in here goes through to my bathroom. But this is the spiral staircase in the tower. It's a granite staircase down to the ground floor. Follow me this way. Thank you for coming to visit my apartment today. I'm sorry it took me so long to get round to showing it to you. If you come back next week, I will show you the jewel of the Chateau de Lalande, our Chapel of St. Joseph. See you next week. Bye from the Chateau. A huge thank you to all of our patrons at Lalande who are making this vlog possible, especially our Marquis and Marquis of Lalande. Dan Banda, Daniela, Danelle Bernakovic, Laura Demare, Caroline Forster, Brenda Gibbons, Lorca Hutakova, JC Award, Maureen Palmer, Colleen Troyer, Brian Woodward and David Young. And thank you to all of you.